And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. What is Gucci Manucci? Welcome to the Half Court Podcast. I am Darwin. We got AV behind the camera, and I got a good friend, good brother of mine, Jeffrey. Jeffrey out here is a nutritionist. We're going to get into that in a minute. Uh, we have a new setup that we're testing out. It's uh, kind of something new to everybody here, so uh, we're just trying to have a better conversation, a better you know flow of conversation, but uh, for now, we're just going to go with it and just and prototype right now. So, Jeffrey, kind of talk to us about what you do and just go from there. All right. So my name is Jeffrey Tamayo. Uh, my official title is I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, so that's kind of what I went to school for. I went to Florida International University, got my degree in nutrition dietetics. But that's when my wasn't my first degree I went after. When I was younger, you know, I thought about being an accountant. No, my brother was an accountant. My grandma was an accountant. My aunt was an accountant. So it's just what I what we do, right? Um, I was all into numbers. Numbers was my thing. I like numbers. So I went to school for that. Did for two years. Got my AA in it. Um, it was a breeze. Just go through it. And I thought about let me go to University of Florida. I had my best homeboy at that time who was going to Florida. Uh, let me just go there, have a good time with him. It's not until I got there that I realized I just got accepted into the top state. Top school in the state for accounting, top five in the nation for accounting. And this is in Florida? Correct, University of Florida. So I wasn't ready for that. I failed all my classes. I failed them all, lost all my scholarships. Um, came back home to South Florida, Miami, defeated. I was, you know, depressed. You know, kid never got an F in my life, never failed a class in my life. It went from, you know, coasting through school and being challenged and just failing everything. Uh, what it really boiled down to, I was never passionate about accounting, so it was difficult for me to chase something. Uh, but what got you into that first? Like I said, my grandmother did it, my aunt did it, oh. so it's just something we did in our family. Yeah, okay. People were just out of school with numbers. Numbers was my thing. I all the subjects I did in school, I was always doing well and excelling in mathematics. Um, so I just figure, hey, they make good money. Accountants make good money. I was just kind of chasing the money in, in that point in time. You know, like it's a good career, make good money, uh, but it's not something I was passionate in. So I went back home and started looking at, I like, I like nutrition, I like sports. Let me look into that. Um, that's when I went to Florida International University, talked to the, talked to the counselors there, um, and that's when I learned about the, being a Russian dietitian. I figured, I'm going to just try it out. I'm not doing anything. I'm just getting into trouble in South Florida. You know, just a lot of, you get, into, you get caught up in the wrong crowd real quick. So I need to get back into school. And it was different. I was peeing out of pocket. So I put in a bit more effort. And top of that, I realized. When so but, sorry about that, but going back to the accounting after you took that L, you just took it and you were like, "Fuck it, I'm not doing this shit." Not not accounting, because that's when I realized like this is not something I'm passionate about. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, after you you said you failed all your classes and stuff, like after you after that happened, you didn't go back and do accounting. You were just not accounting. accounting. No. So I so what kind of happened? I got a job in accounting. I got I was in a payroll account. I did payroll accounting and did that for six months. And as we realized, this is boring. I'm in front of a computer, payroll accounts, you don't really do much. You pay the bills, you can pay your bills in two or three days. The rest of the week, you're just sitting there. So it's not something I was really feeling. So I was kind of went back to school looking for something I was most passionate about. And that's when I found nutrition and sports nutrition. So that's something I felt differently because when I was starting my schooling and nutrition, I saw myself beyond the degree. With accounting, I was chasing my degree. I was gonna get my AA. I was going to get my master's. I was going to get my bachelor's. So that's all I saw, just a degree. With nutrition, it was different. Mm -hmm. I was envisioning myself beyond the bachelor's. I was to become a registered dietitian. I was going to become a sports dietitian. I was going to impact younger nutritionists and younger registered dietitians. So that's how I knew it was different. That's how I knew I was a bit more passionate about it. So when you uh, decide that you're like, fuck this accounting shit, let me do the nutrition. It's, it's, it's something that was that always caught your attention when you were way younger before you. Yeah. So nutrition played a big role in my life in multiple ways. In high school, I was active. I played sports. I did football and wrestling. Half the year, I was about buck 70. The other half, 130, 135. No one told me how to lose weight. Just, hey, wrestling season, drop 30 pounds. I'm like, okay. So you just do what? what the next knucklehead told you to do you know the your seniors they don't know any better either you know running in Miami heat in trash bag and i remember time when i got into does that method works huh does that method works 
Well, you sweat. I mean, but at the end of the day, part of it, the sweating is only good when it comes to resin when you're cutting weight because you're trying to reduce as much weight as possible. So you cut weight. That's what cutting weight is. But you're not, it's not increasing lean body mass or decreasing uh, fat mass. You're just sweating it off. By that age, you don't know any different. You think it's yeah. working. You think, oh, I'm sweating. I got to work, work, work out in. Uh, it, did, it did better. But you don't know any different. You're just following the, what the next knucklehead like did. I mean, yeah. I remember a time I had a trash bag on inside a car with the heater on and 90, 100 degree weather in South Florida. I mean, I'd done that, you know, but with no guidance because no one tells you. That's unhealthy as shit. I mean, it is. I mean, but that's, you're, that's, you're, you're not doing any physical about. activity. You're just there. Just Well, that's part of the day. I mean, when you're wrestling, my warm up was three mile run. You have practice, then you go home and run some more. So you're always active. You don't fuel your workout. You don't know what to do because the coach is not going to tell you because you you follow his rules something happened to you he's liable how he's going to tell you is lose the weight you know so really they the, the coach the coaches can't tell you like they won't it's liable if, if i coach tells you how to lose weight you follow his rules and something happened to you who's who's to blame the school the coach oh shit that's crazy you know? so it's always like i'm 170 dropped on 160 155 so in the corner dropped on the 155 150, not too far. 145, real close. You, you start, you get pushed, you get pushed, you get pushed. Eventually, like, no, I'm, no, no, I'm done. 135 is it for me. And they leave you alone. I mean, that at least was my experience. I mean, it could be different. And I'm talking about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, definitely could be different nine days. I mean, it's totally different. You know, kids have died because of this. So I'm sure there's minimum weight class now. There's how much you could actually lose throughout the year. There's ways where you could wait. You could, Get classified at one weight class and increase weight throughout the year that's different when i did it 135 you had to be 135 the entire season now you start at 135 and there's a certain percentage i see you go up they allowed you to kind of gain weight mm -hmm. to kind of were you good at wrestling i was decent i was decent so um, you was I, into wrestling yeah i didn't ever know this i mean that's all i lost weight i was a, i was a chubby kid i mean i was talking about just a, that's why right. I, with wrestling you have to build a lot of strength huh because it's like you're Stamina, strength, like stamina too, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. A lot of people, yeah, because you're just like, I mean, I, I, yeah, yes, technique. yeah, technique. Yeah. And that's kind of where I struggled the most with the technique parts. I started when I was entering high school. You had kids wrestling since they were kids, and I'm, I'm not gonna compete. I mean, there's no way. I had strength. That's what I had. If I would have died better, I would have even more strength. And that's always been my, my, my calling there, at least with wrestling. I used my power against other kids. Um, but my technique, I was always building it. And the worst for me with high school, so every did you, year I had a different coach. Do you remember if you felt w like uh, weak and shit whenever you were yeah. doing all that? Like you felt stuck yeah. shit? Tired, weak, half asleep in the classroom. I remember to this day. It just, I just, it was permissible. Last, my last year, I just, I, I just couldn't more. Like I'm, my senior year, you don't want to go through that. You just want to have a good time. That's when I kind of, you know, I'm good. Yeah. I don't want to keep losing weight. And it's really five years of wrestling. My fifth different coach, and each coach wanted to teach you something different. So that's one of my technique suffers, you know. Each technique, each coach teaching something different. They see, oh, this is what you're good at. This is what you'd be doing. So at that point in time, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. But that's where my passion came from. Um, my grandfather died of diabetes. My grandma, my godmother's a diabetic. So that's where. That has a lot. Does obviously nutrition has a lot to do with that. You yeah. Because I have a lot of family members that have diabetes, and it's like. I keep telling people that it has a lot to do with nutrition. So um, it, 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 it's, it's everything. It's not even a lot. It's everything. Yeah. So it's, it's like, everything. you know, like I see, you know, us like Puerto Ricans and I'm talking Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, black like, people. We love, yeah, black people with the fried. Like, we love fried shit. Like, if you go to Puerto Rico, they got some delicious fucking what we call it. Like, it's part of the culture, which is hard, why it's hard to, like, let it go. Because you're just like, damn, I want some. Yeah, like, so, oh, I want like, I know. It is cultural. Food is emotion. Yeah. It's hard to let it go. It is. I mean, they said, you could talk about un mofongo for you. Your mouth is in the water. You tell me oh, mangu shit. for Dominican. My mouth is in the water. It's just culture. Um, Pastor carne asada, like with some yeah. tacos. Like you see all that grease and you like, oh, I want to get a lime on that bitch and just. It's dripping down your hand. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I'm telling you. So like all that, like I know for a fact when I go back to Puerto Rico, I might get diabetes because I'm going to eat all that shit. You know, <laughs> I get that once in a lifetime, bro. So like. I got to eat all these fried shit that's not healthy, but it's part of the culture. And I'm kind of, in a way, I'm glad I don't live there anymore because I would be eating that shit every day. And it's possible. So, like, you you remove yourself from that that 
environment. So it's very possible that you probably saved yourself in a way. Yes. You know? so, and I, I miss it. Don't get me wrong. I miss it. It's fucking delicious food, great atmosphere. You got beaches. This, but it happens for a reason because a lot of my family members have diabetes. Like, and it's I can just tell, man. It's is not it, like they're. I, well, it's because it's one of those, it's kind of like just ignorance. Like people don't. Well, like, knowledge, I think, too, has to do well, with it. You I, don't know. Yeah, that's you know? what I mean. That's yeah, what yeah, ignorance yeah. is. Like they're just not. They don't know better. So that's what. I, it's part of it, but you don't think they get educated in the hospital. You think that you don't think that doctor tells them you got to eat better. Some of it is just yeah, it's not ignorance. It's just they don't want to change. It, it, yeah, it won't happen to me. Uh, that's not. I'm good. If, if I die, I die. So I think it's just beyond ignorance. I, some people really don't know. You become diabetic. You're, okay, I didn't know. I change. I'm better now. But some just refuse. Don't want to change. Uh, I've been doing this for years. So I'm fine. You I'm know what? Gets, I have an uncle, and he's like, he still eats like shit. And I'm like, bro, like, why are you still? He's like, uh, I got medicine. I got medicine. The medicine controls it all. It's, it's all right. And, and that's the aspect of it where... America is such a medicine first society. Everything's about medicine. Doctors are off the back. We're going to put on this medicine. We're going to increase your dose, give you more medicine. I don't know people like, oh, I don't got diabetes. Yes, you do. You're just taking medicine. You still have the disease. Just because your blood sugar is controlled doesn't mean you stop having the disease. You're still diabetic. You take medication every day for it. You're still diabetic. People believe in their mind because of this medicine. I'm not. I don't have these issues anymore. And it's crazy because you got to keep in mind too, like, um, you know, my family members have a lot of these prescriptions to control that, you know? So you got to keep in mind, like, that is also messing up your, um, like, your kidneys too, you know? They all have side effects. They all have side effects. Like, all those effects. pills, mm -hmm. like, just taking them every day, every day, every day, that's not, like, a good sign too, like. What's easier? Take this pill or put in the work. Eat better, be active, eat less, make better decisions. Or take this pill. I mean, it's just a culture, you know. It's just it's the way we do things here. It's a lot easier to just take a pill. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, hey, everyone want, just looking for that magic pill for success, magic pill it, for it, weight loss, magic pill for why, everything. Why? Why you think it's like? Why everybody just is so big, like a fan of just the shortcuts? Like if they f get a shortcut, that's gonna be like, oh, this pill can make you lose fifteen pounds instead of like wake your ass up early or whatever, whenever you can get your, get your ass to the gym, work out. I mean, I thought like, about that. I don't know if it's human nature. Don't know if it's just the way we're raised or where we're taught. Um, you know, growing up, I just was been taught just work hard. But human nature is it's hard to change. We fear change. We fear yeah, those things. It. Exactly. So yeah. It's if I could take a pill, forget about it, move forward, it's a lot easier to do that than to say, or it's, it's difficult to face the fact that you're diabetic because you did this to yourself. Yeah. You know, it's hard. It's hard to face that. You know, you're overweight because you chose not to change. It's hard to face that fact. It's face that reality. Like you are responsible for this, and people, some people just can accept that. Like, no, it's not me. No, it's society. No, it's all the marketing. Start yes, blaming, it's difficult. So they start blaming blame other, blame the marketing, blame and others. I think another thing too is, that, uh, I don't know if it's human nature, but we don't like we move away from like pain and. Like, we like comfort. We like to be... So whenever you're doing things like, you know, working out and just waking up at... You know, if you wake up at 6 in the morning to go work out, like, you kind of... You're just kind of like, man, it's so comfy right here, you know? So I think that's why most people... Most people just don't want... They just want to be comfortable. It's uh, what uh, Joe Rogan likes to call it. It's uh, the beauty of discipline, you know? Because discipline gets you... You get shit done on shit that you're not comfortable with. Like sometimes I don't like, I don't want to go to the gym, but I know I have to go to it, you know? So like if I, if I be like, oh, I'm not feeling good, I'm not feeling the gym today, then I'm, 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 I'm a failure because you can't, you can't, I can't expect myself to go when I'm 100% all the time. And that's what discipline kicks yeah, in. Like, sure. no, nah, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go if I'm feeling like shit. I gotta go if I didn't get well, that much sleep. That, yeah, that's not, that, that's not a lot discipline. of people though. Like, yeah, exactly. Will why do, do you that. go? Me? Yeah. Why do you, I, why, why? Well, what, motivates me to go to the gym is just to look better and for myself feel better look better so, so that so it's not the discipline it's, it's your why you have a reason that's your reason but, some people right that's don't what, have what, a reason don't have a why deep enough to push them some people just losing weight it's not enough reason to push themselves you know lose weight so i could live longer to see my grandkids grow up it's a deeper reason the deeper connection might 
help them motivate them. Some people just need help finding that reason, finding that why. See, say, um, uh, say, when we when I used to sell memberships at Golds, that was our biggest thing. Like, find out why they're here. Like, yeah, why there there's a reason that they got up and. They walked into this gym. They were vulnerable. They were like, "I need help. I need." So you got to get it out. Like, why? And yeah, you have true. to. You, you have to find it. it. And sometimes the surface is out. I'm here because I want to lose weight. Okay, that that brought you into the door. Okay, now what's gonna keep you coming every day? What's gonna keep you pushing yourself every morning, waking up early every night? So that that's what got you here. But now I gotta dig a little deeper, and that's kind of what you know, kind of what, what I look at when I talk about nutrition to clients. When I talk to one on one. Okay, why are you here? And then go further. That's kind of crazy because it goes back to the accounting and nutrition thing. Like your why wasn't deep enough for the accounting. So Exactly. Yeah. My why wasn't deep enough for accounting. It wasn't. I mean, I just wanted to make money. With nutrition, I said, I want to become more. I want to be part of this community. I saw myself as a part of this community and contributing back to this community. And that pushed me forward. So you, you, your why has to be something deep. It can be superficial, you know. Like you said, I want to look good, but I still feel there's something deeper in there. You know, than just that. You, you, yes, I feel for you at least. You're an individual that holds himself accountable for what he does, and the failure, the fact that you let yourself down or didn't accomplish what you set out to do, is your why. Not really because I want to look good. The fact you say you're gonna do it, and you didn't do it. That in itself, not accomplish that. It's an, it was, it's you alive. Yeah, that should happen. That's it's, that's you as an individual. One, yeah, one. A day know? that I'm supposed to go and I don't go, like that's like I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I and it wasn't kind of missing my work. It's because you let yourself oh, down. You feel you're, like a little deep, bitch. Deep, yeah, deep down. But then it's not an individual, and that's kind of just who are you as an individual? And what's your why? And that, and I know that of you because we know each other for quite a bit. You're driven, and not meeting your goals so that breaks you down. You know, mm-hmm. so that's you. I don't think you get up because you want to look good. That's not deep enough. It's the fact you don't want to fail. The fe- the fear of failure is what keeps you going in everything you do. You know? That's one, yeah. So that's what keeps you up. It's not I'm dedicated. Like, I fear failure. Some people don't fear failure, are comfortable with failure. Well, that's the thing, too. You know? I, 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 With that, I, I'm not afraid to fail. You know, because if I have to, like, I've switched. But you, I mean, you're. you're uh, I, I, switched I switched up on a lot of shit. Like, I'll try something, fail, and try the next thing, you know? Maybe failure is not the word, but I think fear of not succeeding. I mean, you, you change, so as you may fail into a positive. A failure is turned into where you can learn from it. It's a lesson learned. Um, but you do fear in a sense, I, at least I think so, um, not being successful, not meeting your goals, not getting to where you want to get at, not being where you yeah. think you belong to be. Um, so not, so in that, in a, in a sense, like I'm not where I want to be, I'm failing. And still, you can still, at the same time, look at failure as I, I did A, I won't do A, I'll do B next. So it can be viewed two, two different ways. Yes. But that's in that, and again, turning back to nutrition, you have to have that why. You have to have that reason that gets you up in the morning to work out or to lose weight or to want to be better, healthy. Did you, and just making those little, like you said, those little decisions, like if your why isn't deep enough and then your homie pulls up with a fucking six pack and some, but you're, you're ah, fuck it, you know, but if, you're, if, if your why is like deep enough, you're going to be like, nah, I'm cool on that, you know. I'm, I'm exactly, because you have a deeper reason than a six pack. Nah, let's go drink, let's go mess around. Your, your reason is deeper than that. So you could, you're able to fight that off. If it's superficial, oh, I'm going to lose weight. Ah, I drink a little beer, I can lose weight later. Versus, nah, my de- right reason is my kids. If I eat, do this, I won't get to see my kids grow up. I won't get to see my kids be, become adults. That's deeper. And, and, you, get, and you, get, you just got to find that individual. Once you find that, you start making little changes. When nutrition, I mean, it's all about making little changes. It's not, I'm going to eat healthy from one day to the next. It's culture, like you said. No, oh, you guys must getting a lot of tamales. You, you know, that's that's your culture. If I go, if I have a Mexican client one on one, I tell him you can't eat any more tamales and more tortilla. What do you think is gonna happen? Then what the fuck? Yeah, yeah he's gonna walk the hell out of that door. He is. It's true. That's who it he happens. is. Yeah. I can't take that away from that individual, like, from yeah, that person. Like, I cannot. Like, like, You're no, taking no, no, no. a piece. Of, no se puede, no se puede. No se You're puede. taking a piece you, of them. You can't. You really can't. You could can work with what they have, work with their cultures, improve it, um, show when they make better decisions, but you can't take it away from them. You can't. 
you lost a client. It's like, no, you don't know what you're talking about because it, it's, an, it's an attack on who they are as an individual. Yeah. You know, they take that personal. It's because this is my coach. It's my food. You tell me I can't have this. It's, yeah. it's a connection. I just ripped it apart. I lost that connection. It doesn't matter what I say. I could be a professional. I could be an expert. I could be whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I lost that connection with that individual. It doesn't matter what I say. They will never listen to me. So it's, it's, it's important to it build is. one-on-one connection with the individual um, before I even start giving nutrition advice to know who they are as an individual, to know what, what are their goals, what do they want to do before I just like, this is your diet plan, follow your diet plan. I mean, that's BS. That's not going to work. Yeah, Diet plans don't work. So how long does it take you to get to know somebody like, uh, like how you're going to attack their plan? Because everybody's different. Like everybody Everyone's has different. Metabolism, different metabolism. Everybody, you know, so. Like, I mean, I don't really look at metabolism. I just kind of look at where they're at nutritionally. All right, let's talk about your diet. Why are you here? What do you want to so, do? Um, so, like, I, the way I approach you is very different from when I approach somebody that's never heard about dieting or never dieted before. Like, you have a baseline for nutrition. Some people don't have a baseline nutrition. Uh, for example, when I was younger, I had a client. The only advice I gave him was cut your rice in half at dinner. Nothing more, nothing less. Very simple. I didn't take away his food. I said, you can't have rice. Just cut it in half. Two or three weeks later, hey, Jeff, I just did that, and I'm, I'm down 20 pounds. I'm down, I'm more like 10, realistically. I'm down like 10 pounds. It was, at that point in time, half his plate was rice. Just cut it in half. You're still eating what you want, but less of it. It's just kind of talking to the individual. Once you see success, okay, I follow this one advice, it worked, they, come, they start coming back to you. It's working. He knows what he's talking about. Because um, everyone wants that magic pill. They think, want that easy, yeah, I think that it's, easy uh, pill. When it comes to that, like certain foods that they love, people love, I, like, I, I think it's an important part of just taking smaller amounts, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially like, if it's something that's in the culture, like it's, it's like deep fried or whatever it is. Like, I feel like that, and that's the hard part too. Cause like, if you're already eating it and you're enjoying it and then you're still hungry, like, you're like, fuck, I want to get two more tacos, you know? Or, and then to be honest, it's crazy because like me, I'm the type of person, I'm pretty self-conscious, but there's times where I know I'm full, but I'm going to, that shit is good. <laughs> and I just eat, I fuck it up, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even though I know I'm not hungry anymore, I'm just like, that shit is good. I'm going to fucking just eat. I think that's the hardest part, just kind of knowing what's the right amount for you and then being like... Well, you know the right amount. You just yeah, said it, you're full. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, it's I not, mean, not knowing. You know that, right? Like, but if you're eating... Of, yeah. That I'm fucking up, but I'm, I still fuck up. You know, like... It's, it's like, back to that why. why. I'm like, he has no reason not to eat that taco. He's full. He still wants it. He has no reason not to eat it. He has no reason to stop him from eating it. He's full. He, your body's telling you, you are done. And I'm, yeah, and I'm just like, you're like, like I don't care. I good. want some more. So it's not a matter of not knowing. You know, your body's telling you, stop. You just override that, like, I don't really so care. I'm going to keep uh, going. Yeah, uh, food has uh, similar, like, you feel good when you eat. So I think, I feel like that's why a lot of obesity happens because. Since you feel, what is it called, dopamine when you fucking... You get dopamine, you epinephrine, um, something, chemicals get released into your brain. So you start feeling good about yourself, particularly with sugar. It's one of those um, carbohydrates that makes you feel good. Um, and top of that, it's empty. It doesn't make you really feel full. So you keep eating it, eating it. Uh, so yeah, there is a connection. That, I mean, food is a, it's chemicals. So, so that's why a lot of people like, when they're depressed, they'll, they'll, have those, they'll do like the, the, what they say, like stress eating and shit like that, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you feel like shit, so you, when you're eating, you feel good, but it, yeah. I mean, as soon as you're done, you feel like a fucking when pig, I had, but. It's crazy, because when I had those days where I was bored and I had nothing to do, and I was just at the house, like that's, I would go to the fridge, eat mm-hmm. something. Because you're bored. Five minutes later, boom, go again. Hum- humans are emotional eaters. That's crazy. We eat when we're bored, we eat when we stress, we eat when we're excited, but it takes... Helping that individual realize you're eating because you're bored. You're eating because you're stressed. Well, the option can eat while you're stressed. Okay. Ask yourself the question, am I hungry or am I bored? So just kind of helping that individual identify those moments. Yeah. Um, like now you're able to identify it, but some people just don't know. They're just opening the refrigerator and just eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, I don't know why I'm eating. Yeah, so it takes that's none. That's every client's different. So you approach that into different. Okay, let's. Monitor your eating habits for a week. Write down how you feel when you eat. 
I felt bored and I ate. Look at this trend. You're bored and you ate. You're stressed and you ate. All right, let's work out. What is stressing out in your life? Let's work on removing those stressors or let's work out on getting a way to manage your stress. Um, you're bored. Let's work on a way to move that out of your life. Uh, how do you get more to think? You read books, listen to music. So, yeah, we're talking about nutrition, but the boredom is making you eat. Now let's fix the boredom. So no worry am I talking about what should you eat. I'm talking about just taking care of that boredom, taking that stress before we talk about food. And that's crazy because you would think nutrition is your talking macros and fats and carbs you won't and you, you won't, won't. You, you lose an individual you lose that individual yeah and you I, you can't get talk about carbohydrates you can't talk about amino, amino acids you can't talk about glycogen you can't they don't know what you're talking about like for example um you ever heard of dihydro, dihydrogen monoxide you know what that is i've heard of it but i don't know the scientific term dihydrogen monoxide i've never heard of it it's odorless it does have any taste if you inhale it, you're suffocating die. And in solid state, it will damage your tissues. Da. So, and we, eat, and we need, and you have this every day. If I gave you a bottle of dihydrogen monoxide, what would you tell me? Do you want it or no? I no. Don't. No. If I give you a bottle of water, will you take it? Yeah. There you go. Water is dihydrogen monoxide, H2O. Di means two, hydrogen, H2. Mono means one, oxide, one oxygen, H2O. If you inhale water, you drown, you die. No order, no taste. Solid, it's frozen, it damages your tissues. So it goes back to, you know, people want to fear, make, use the scientific terms and, and make claims. Everything I said was true. But if you just do a little bit of research, you know, oh, that's just water. So when I told you dihydrogen, dihydrogen monoxide, no, hell no, I ain't drinking that. Here, want some water? Sure. But it's the same thing. So when people want to use the chemical names of certain things, just make you fear. So people are on, on TV, nutritionists, Dr. Austin, all these They like big, to sound smart and smart, shit. Smart, sound smart. And you're like, oh, yeah, he sounds smart. I'm going to believe him. Like, you, you believed me when I told you all this. Like, no, I don't, want, I don't want none of that, right? Yeah. You believe that. Yeah. It's true. But... It's the psychological shit. Like Psychologically, like it's just water. Guys, you sound smart to dumb people. Exactly. So we're talking about carbon behind oxide. So I just scared the crap out of you. Oh, he sounds smart. We don't know what the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what we think with nutrition. There's so much mis misinformation out there. Everyone wants to be claim an expert uh, because I follow a specific diet. It worked for me. I'm going to teach this to everyone. And that's it's where like, I think they fuck up. That's, yeah. Fuck, bro. It's, like, it's like, like cultish. People that, that lose weight doing a certain thing. Like, they swear that that's, like, the fucking, like, that's it. You know? So, like, yeah, I've seen, seen it. And I'll give you an example. So, like, people that use the Herbalife, like, though, you lose weight and they want to push it to everybody, thinking that's, that's going to be the solution for them. When in reality, what it comes down to is learning your own body. You know, I think you need to learn what's, like, if you eat a, a cake and you know you gain weight because of that, like, you need to find a way to just trim that shit down and, just get it out, out of yeah. your food. Like it goes back to like what you were saying about the magic pill. Like a lot of times this shit sounds too complicated for people. So they're like, oh damn, so I can just take these shakes and then like I'm gonna lose this much weight and I don't have to like really cook and I don't, you know, so they- that They want for magic pill was easy, you know? I mean, I'm always concerned when somebody's pushing a product. What, what is their motive? Is your motive really my health or is it your pockets? So always be wary of that. I mean, somebody's pushing Herbalife, somebody's pushing a specific diet. I mean, yeah, I could push a, a meal plan, but that's BS. I mean, anybody pushing a meal plan, it's not looking out for you. They're not. Because you'll follow that meal plan for a week, two weeks, or work, what happens to two weeks? You don't learn anything. You just follow what this person told you to do. And two weeks later, hey, it really worked. I need another two weeks. I need another month. So it's kind of, hook you on to his or her's meal plan mm -hmm. to come, keep you coming back to, uh, as an individual. They just so want I don't money. do meal plans. I mean, I could give you an idea of what you should be eating, but to say this is what you should be eating every day of the week, you're not really learning. My goal as a, and a dietitian is to teach people, mm -hmm. help them understand their relationship with their food. How do you mm -hmm. communicate with food and how is that part of your world and how you view that and how can you make this work for you as an individual? How do you use food as a tool and I let it control you. Um, so in nutrition, it's a lot of counseling. You know, psychological. Yeah. Food is psychological. Huge. It is. Yeah. 
you know it is yeah um that's that bless you brother and that's why i think uh a lot of these fitness people fell off because they were so full of shit there were there were there were sellouts they'll be like oh uh if you want to learn more about my diet my meal plans go here instead of being like hey uh you want to lose weight let's find out how we can make you lose weight and it's funny because i get that all the time on snapchat i'll get an ad that says and it's, it's like trump is watching me or some shit because mm-hmm. they'll be like hey uh i have five meals that kill testosterone and five meals that boost it click here to learn more about it man you're just so full of shit like, when i mean he might he might have that information you know what i'm saying he, he you can still take that information in because he might have he might give you some good information but because there is foods that kill testosterone right i mean not that i'm aware of i mean i don't know anything to kill or, testosterone or lower it there's not a i mean your testosterone is going to decrease naturally as you age no, I don't have as much as you do because you're younger. As you get older, you're going to lose testosterone. You can the only way you're going to boost that up is through drugs. It's not through steroids. diet. So through diet, you cannot boost your testosterone. Not to my knowledge. I don't know any food that actually going to boost it to the point like it's going to make a, a significant difference in your in, in your life. Hmm. I mean, See, I'm not an expert, but I had a, just a feeling that I'm like, what? Like really? Like, not not could, to the point that like, it's a significant amount to say like your night and day. I mean, drugs. It's drug or bust. I mean, you want more testosterone, steroids, human growth hormones. I mean, that's where you're going to get some more of that compound in your body that's going to increase in your body mass. It's not eating a specific food. I'm like, oh, this is going to increase my estrogen level. I can't eat this. I mean, it's never going to eat you because to the point that you're going to grow man boobs. You know, it's, it doesn't. No. There's no food that could do that to you. I mean, it's just. just I, it's, it's probably one of his strategies to get people Can it boost click. testosterone? Maybe. Maybe, but not to the point so significant it's going to make a difference in your life. Like uh, one popular supplement a long time ago, I heard Dr. Oz talk about it, raspberry ketones. Ever heard about that? Mm-hmm. Raspberry ketones. Um, he promoted his, on his show, talked about weight loss. You take this, you're going to lose weight. Science shows you lose weight. So yeah, science did show that help reduce weight loss, but in mice. So it's not the same thing as the human body. So the research was done on mice, not on human, but yeah, they're promoting, and you see all these claims these supplements, oh, proven to lose weight, proven to burn fat. Okay, burning fat and losing fat, it's not the same thing. Yeah. It's all marketing. You know, you're going to burn fat. You're going to utilize, utilize more fat when you work out. Okay, you, you already utilize fat. Your body breaks down carbohydrates, breaks down fat for energy as you work out. You already do that. You, you utilize more fat. Okay. Doesn't mean you're gonna lose more weight. Yeah, you're a lot more personal as far as like, um, you know, trying to see what their, you know, what their goals are as far as nutrition and losing weight and stuff. And and that of the meal plans is kind of makes a lot of sense. Like, oh, don't follow my meal plan or don't follow this meal plan. Like, I need to know what you eat. That way, I can kind of build something around it. Yeah, see. I mean, I gotta go. It's based on what you're currently eating. I cannot give you a, a generalized plan i gotta know who you are what you eat i mean well, uh, where you're at who do you specialize like do you specialize just regular people regular like athletes my specialty is athletes that's why i specialize oh, i'm okay. a board certified board certified specialist in sports dietetics so that's my specialty um so i went to school for that got a certification got my master's in nutrition human performance so my specialty are most act, active individuals and athletes so you said you were doing, uh, you were working for the kids over there on OU. Yeah, so that's actually so what was... brought me to Oklahoma. I got a job with the University of Oklahoma, working with the sports nutrition department. Because you were telling me that you had to prepare them certain meals and certain times. So what was the breakdown of? I that? mean, when I got there, honestly, I mean, I, I was a grunt. You know, I was a grunt. So my job it consists of being there at five in the morning to about seven o'clock at night. I'm there at five in the morning, setting up their feeding station. A feeding station is pretty much like a imagine a snack bar. So right before they work out, they have to work out six in the morning. I'm there at five, getting the whole station ready. You got nutrition bars. Um, you got PB&J. I'm probably making like 100 PB&J every, every morning. So what is, a, is the PBJ is like a good source to kind of get you through that workout as far as energy goes? Because that's the thing with me. When I go and work out, I have to eat at least an hour to 30 minutes before the workout. I did that's what you want. So I'm making the PB&J not for before the workout. It's more lead for afterwards. For after when they're done. Correct. Correct. Okay. So some of them are coming early. They can probably get like a, you know, a, a smoothie, 
Uh, we got shakes available, something more of a quick carbohydrate. So you probably have some, we have the Gatorade chews. Uh, the PB and J's, I'm making those for after they work out. They come, they grab one, take two or three with them, and they eat it throughout the day. And in the way, we're providing them extra calories. So my PB and J can be three to 500 calories. So if you have an athlete and eat six, 7,000 calories a day, I mean, they're eating a couple of PB and J's a day. Yeah. You know, it helps you, you get to that. Yeah. You just yeah, got to do what you do. Yeah. And it's crazy because everybody's body's different because AV has gone through, like he's worked out with me. And he has nothing in his stomach, but he still can do a workout. I, when I'm hungry, I, I, I can do a workout, but I don't function the same because mm -hmm. I'm lacking that like energy to get me through that workout. I mean, I would ask, so even talking about early morning workout, like you wake up early and work out with empty stomach. No, it, our stuff was like more of like what? 10, 11, you know, and like, so at 11 o'clock, so you ate nothing the entire day. And you could work out 11 o'clock. Cause I, that last time. Last time, well, the to last be honest, time, I'm fucking terrible. Like, yeah, uh, I, there's times where I would. Well, it didn't happen the whole like a lot. A lot, but it would. I mean, it would, I remember the last time we worked out, we went to Crunch, and then I you haven't ate shit. shit. So like, you were you still powered through that workout, and I was like, I wonder the? if it has to do with me kind of just being kind of fat and having that. And uh, I mean, definitely, I would ask what you ate the other day. I would ask what type of workout you did. Was it just weightlifting? No, we well that did. Uh, for Was example, more, that day I didn't anything, and we did deadlifts. We did uh, what did chest. we do? We did chest after that, like uh, bench press, and then we did yeah, yeah it chest. It was like a two hour workout. Yeah. So and it was I, like a chest and deadlifts. But I did halfway through. I was like, I had to go to the bathroom and like kind of get myself together because I was kind of whoo. Was well, so it did affect you? It did. I got through it, but it did oh, okay. affect me. Okay. So it did affect you. I, I like, mean, man. now the question would be, could you have done better? It's not to say you're not going to finish your workout. It's not to say you can't push through it, you can't power through it. It's more of it, what's it the most efficient way? Yeah. If you were to eat, could you have done better? Would it have been a more yeah. better workout? Yeah. Um, that's what I'm more boils down nutrition. And if you do that over time, one day, two day, three days, so just constantly not eating right, and how is that affecting your progress? Is it hindering your process? Is it, is it slowing down your progress? Nutrition is not a one day thing. It's, it's a long term deal, you know? Yeah. So it did, it did affect you because you were woozy. You had to go back and then put your power through it. If you had ate where you ain't gotten woozy, if you had ate right, can you have done more weights? Yeah. Can you push even more weights than you did before when the data has been higher? So you're able to push more weights, then it means you lost progress because you didn't push yourself the most you could have. So that's all the question I, I asked, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you power through it? Yeah, you did. What's the most efficient way? Could have been done better? It probably could have. Yeah, yeah, so it's the, like uh, C.T. Fletcher, whenever he was young, he said that he wouldn't care. Like he would do a stupid ass workout and then he'd go and get like a cheeseburger and a shake. And I didn't care because I was just still strong, you know. And eventually his fucking heart gave out and he was, oh shit. Who's, yeah, who's C.T. Fletcher? He's a bodybuilder. So he did a lot of, he had like a, a, a strong man. He had a stroke. That's what he had, like a heart disease or some shit like that. He wasn't a strong man or a bodybuilder. He was a from old because he broke the record for bench a uh, bench press. Well, no, no, yeah, he was strong man. Strong, strong man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he, he broke. He broke. Yeah. Okay, so also be aware, athletes are genetic freaks. You can't compare yourself to an athlete. I mean, LeBron James is a genetic freak. Yeah. yeah. All those NBA stars are genetic freak, even though the. The bottom tier guys, just two genetic freaks. They're school, every one of us in here together. Mm -hmm. um, they just can't compare yourself to them. They, their body worked out differently. Um, for example, I could, those and them athletes that come from high school to college, or they're difficult to really sell nutrition to them because they're 17, body out of control because they're genetically more gifted than the other player on that field. So they didn't eat well. They ate like crap, and they still outperform them because they're genetically gifted. Yeah. So when they come to college, like ah, I can eat this. I can. I don't gotta do that. I don't gotta do that. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, eventually, they realize like oh, this is a different level. Maybe I gotta change. Maybe they don't because they're even more gifted than those other players on that field. Um, eventually, it'll catch us up to me. It always catches up. I mean, like Ray Allen. I mean, when he mm. playing for the Heat, he preaches diet. He was older player in playing late into the late years in his, in his career. So he had to switch his diet. Eventually, then we, Dwayne Wade had to do it. He had to switch his diet. LeBron, to this day, still does it. You know, it's year 17, and he's still outperforming these young players. Like, 
That's, I mean, part it, of it. Diet has a lot to do. Part with of his it. diet. Yeah. Other part of it, he's just a genetic monster. He is just yeah, no one. Another. He's one in a lifetime, one generational athlete. You won't probably see anything like that for a long time. He's. It's just different. You're 17. So he got there. He, he was, went from high, high school. school to the NBA. And he's now in year 17, 35, right? He's 35. Just about, he's about my age, yeah. So at that point, 35. bro, all those miles that you put into your body, just running back and forth and like. And don't. And, and also, he's still, realized, he's still the best, bro. He's still the best. Still realized that when he was in the Heat, he was in the final four years. He played an extra two or three, extra two seasons compared to everybody else. How many games you're playing afterwards? He pl- he has played more seasons than anyone else. So 17 years, but it's not 17 seasons. You could probably do 20, 22 seasons with the, all the finals he's been at. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, he's been in the game for a and while. A lot of players, when they get to that 15 mark, 15 year mark, they start declining. Like. I mean, he's declining. He is, but he's still he's, he's, he's in the well. MVP race right now, with uh with Giannis. He's a, he's top. He's two. on the race, but who should really get it? He said that's cute. I mean, <laughs> I'm just trying to prove a point here. Like he's yeah. definitely. Dec- I mean, it's well, yeah, no, time. It's I mean, if you were to look at numbers, time, you know. So like, it, I mean, he'll catch up eventually. I mean, he's aging really well. He's done. He's he's really good. What he does, he surrounds himself with young athletes. I mean, who does he have right next to him? So Anthony what? Davis. Anthony Davis. Yep. I mean, he surrounds himself with young athletes. So I mean, don't 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 let his game fool you. He is he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He surrounds well, he's himself. Numbers still. Well, yeah, he still is. I mean, so. he's still going to. But you can't compare that to um, Giannis. I think Giannis should be the MVP. Yeah, he's, I, I think his numbers are better. He's, he's doing it by himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to Lamar Scott James, he's got, got the best record in the NBA. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, but I think he's going to have No it. doubt. I know, and we still genetic free. Both of them are genetic monsters. I mean, yeah. you can't take that away from them. So, yeah, that's pretty, pretty interesting. So, what does it take on, like, eat more portions, small, like, eat more during, during the day, smaller portions? Yeah, let's, to, ask, let's ask some of those, uh, those, those questions that are, like... Um, frequently asked, like... Yes. Because that's, that's something them, I, like, I was... Do I, uh, I only... Uh, I don't know why I'm fat. Uh, my dad, th- th- my dad loves this one. No, pues que yo no sé por qué estás tan gordo. No más como una, yo no como. No más una vez al día. You know, I don't eat a lot. I'm, I just, just eat one, once a day. I don't know why. One, I'm, I'm like ah, the one know, meal that. he, re- the one meal he remembers. Does remember snacking? Does remember eating the Snicker bars here and there? And that's most people. They remember that one large meal. It's like, for example, I had a client, a girl. Um, she just said she was trying to gain weight. She wanted to increase lean body mass. She's just like. I eat a lot. I eat a lot. I don't understand what I'm, I'm not getting weight. We're having the conversation. Okay, what do you have for breakfast? No, I don't have time. I skip breakfast. All right, what's for lunch? Sometimes I eat lunch and sometimes I don't eat lunch. Okay, what do you have for dinner? Oh, I have this big old plate, arroz con habichuela, con just a big old typical Cuban meal. I'm like, that one plate, in her mind, como mucho. But really, she didn't. So she missed did, a lot of opportunities. Did that balance out what she missed out on? Exactly. Because what happens calories? is you, you back low your calories. You spend the whole day not eating. By the time dinner comes around, you're starving. So you tend to overeat. Yeah. Um, so when your dad's somebody, como una vez día nada más. But it's possible. He probably doesn't eat all day, but he back low his calories. And he's catching up. And he's so hungry. By the time dinner comes around, he overeats. Yeah. And for him, it's just one meal. Now, understand, well, you just ate about 3,000 calories in that one meal. So... Yeah. So that's possible. I mean, in each case, it's different. So it's not the same. I'm just making an assumption. I don't know what he does. So I don't know if he's good breakfast. It could be possible that, you know, I know someone that is like, I don't know what's going on, but they're snacking at their school all day on M&Ms, on Skittles. Pure sugars. Doesn't mention that. Because in their mind, it doesn't register. It's just two or three M&Ms, two or three Snickers, one or two cupcakes. It's all that. It's not much, but it adds up. And people don't add those little things. They just add up, you know? And to them, it's like, I'll just add one meal. Um, and as far as, like, how many times you eat a day, it, it really depends on your goal. I mean, just intermittent, intermittent fasting work. Yeah, you can produce waste, weight loss. It's, it's all individualized. You can say, like, this is the best way to do it. You know, so, it's all different so from individual. The, the people that, that say, like, eating, like, every... Uh, what is it like four hours or something like that? Mm-hmm. Like eating a bunch of little meals. What's so that? yeah, more meals during during the day, small portions. That's gonna help you uh, boost your, your, your metabolism. metabolism. Yeah. So what does it take on that? If it works for you, it just really depends. It depends. I can't say like uh, eat four meals a day. Like I rather eat three to four meals a day. 
I feel more comfortable when I eat three, four meals a day. Um, I balance it out so that I feel better. So you're based on the individual. If you're active individual, you work out in the morning, maybe you eating a light breakfast. Maybe if you work out in the afternoon, I got to shift your schedule. Maybe work at night, I got to shift your, your meal plan. So it's really hard to say. Like It's almost like a science, uh, like a science project. Like you, it is. Like you, you were like, okay, let me try this. And then you try it and then you exactly. see what, how you, your body exactly. feels. It's, it's, this one's different. You write it down. Like, exactly. It's all different. So I could, re I could recommend something and not work. All right, let's go back to drama, but where I didn't work. Did you do it correctly? Did not do it correctly? It didn't work for you. You had barriers. I could do intermittent fasting. Maybe for some it works, some for don't. Maybe it's just too much of a barrier. And, you know, I got to I gotta beat up early, and I don't have time to eat breakfast. So maybe for those individuals, they can because they already wake up early, and they go through their day without eating, and it works for them. So I'm just like, no, I have to eat my breakfast. I can't skip breakfast. So it, it's individualized. Yeah, and see that that's one of those things that that's why I think people like they uh, make it generic. They, like they they, just... A lot of people fear the, the topic of nutrition because whenever you tell them that, the, you know, whenever you tell somebody, there's really no you got shortcut to it. You gotta just try this and then see how you feel. If it doesn't work, you gotta try this and see how it feels. So like people don't like that. Shit no, they don't. They, they just want tell me what to do, make me lose weight. But just some really work like that. Yeah. I could give you advice. And may, more than likely, it's going to work out for you. Uh, but we got to start somewhere. You got to see where you're at and go from it, there. It's like a, it has to be a lifestyle change. Yeah. Changes I mean, definitely area. when it comes to you know, an athlete, I still want to, I would rather my athlete eat multiple bills per day. Uh, my main concern is just maintaining their lean body mass. Definitely mean eating between 20 and 30 grams of protein every couple of hours just to maintain it. Um, and every athlete's different. You know, you might have a football player. And they could probably need those consistent energy throughout the day. Uh, you might have an athlete who's just a bodybuilder who may not need that because their workload is very different. It's very static compared to a uh, strength and conditioning program for a football player. So each athlete is a little different. So each athlete is going to require a different plan. Um, so that's uh, pretty interesting as far as that. So and this is an issue that I have and my brother I know for a fact has this and I know he's going to be listening to this. But what would you say for the hard gainers? Like, as far as calories goes, eat more to gain weight. Eat more. If you're not gaining weight because you're not eating enough, and you gotta find a way to eat more, um, liquid calories. Now, now, when you say eat more, does it matter what I eat as long as I get the calories in or what? That's debatable. That's dirty gaining. Um, I always promote health. Definitely make the best choice. Does. Because you want to gain weight, you still want to be healthy with it. You still want don't want to jeopardize your cardiovascular, you know, diseases. You don't want to have, get diabetes. You still want to make those choices. Um, it's all about just eating more healthy fats. I would definitely say, um, I don't, I'm, I'm big about if you need to gain weight, drink your calories, some chocolate milk. Um, that could be easy, 200 calories right there. My son, he does two or three chocolate peanut butter smoothies per day. Um, so just find ways to just increase it. So instead of water with your lunch, have 100% orange juice. That's another 100 calories. Or have some milk with it, another 100 calories. And just add 100 here, 100 there, 500 in a day. Oh, just you will increase little by little. Um, I think most people just don't realize how much they need and don't know how much they're really eating and don't know how much it really takes. Okay. I mean, gaining okay. lean body mass it's hard yeah definitely like uh, uh people are like oh i could eat all day i'm like when you're active burning calories burning fat trying to be and doing everything proper you're trying to eat clean sometimes eating too clean you're, not eating, you're not gonna get enough calories because you're eating a lot of fruit and vegetable that tend to be lower calories so you just gotta sit down look at your diet how much am i intaking how much do i need so at that point in time maybe with a hard gain i probably will talk about calories now, where are you? How much do you need? Um, it's crazy, man, because uh, like monitoring is such a hard or it's a like a must, I feel, because that's how I any any time that I want to lose weight or anything like that, I have to sit down and like write the shit down. Like, what, what have I been eating? What have I? And I think that's the problem with most people. They can't just sit down and like put it all out there you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. with themselves like you don't got to show this shit to nobody just sit down in front of, like, just see okay i've been doing this this and that and, and until you don't do that then there's really no you're gonna just keep being like 
in denial type of thing. Yeah, you know what and I mean? some mm-hmm. people just, like I said, are ignorant. You just don't really know how much calorie they're really eating. They just don't know how much calories in a, you know, in what they eat. They don't know and, how and, much and it and is. Like for example, when I uh, when I started, like I didn't, I knew that I had a monitor, so I didn't really know exactly how many. But I would make in uh, like. Uh, I found a calculator, mm-hmm. a calorie calculator. So sometimes it wasn't the exact omelet that I ate, but I would type in like omelet with uh, and it's all, ham. And, the, and it kind of gave me it's a not exact, like a it's not exact, but it gave me an idea. Of and that's like, what you need. That's all you need. Yeah. Like, okay, well, shit. Now, now it makes sense why I'm fucking fat because I've been way over, you know what I'm saying? But if I would have never done that, then I would have never known. Like I would have kept saying like, well, I don't know why, you know, I mean, I don't really eat out. I don't really. Yeah, because you think, oh, eating out will get you fat. Oh, eating bread will get you fat. I don't eat bread. I don't eat out. Not realizing what you just ate an entire avocado by yourself. And that's a whole lot of calories. But avocado is healthy. Yes. But you ate a whole avocado by yourself. Yeah. That's still not how you do it. So it's, it's just making them aware of what they're consuming. Yeah. It's opening their eyes like, oh, that is. Oh, I didn't know that. And then from there, hopefully they learn and hopefully they want to make that change. That's why, you know, I like to talk about what are you eating? What are you going through the day? What do you have for breakfast? What's for lunch? What did you snack? What do you eat for dinner? Okay. And what does your typical day look like? If a non typical day look like, uh, what do you eat on the weekends? Is it different from the weekdays? So obviously on the weekends, you know, it's very different from our weekday. We're pretty routine individuals in the weekdays. You know, we have our, you know, nine to five jobs. It's pretty routine. Your weekend's no different. And then what's crazy, uh, Stephanie, this personal trainer that we had, she's like, so I have clients that do great. They do great throughout the week. And then they come back on Monday or, you know, and then they're like, like they'll fucking went up on weight or something. And she's like, basically all the work that we did throughout the week, you want to fucked it up all on the weekend. Like, I mean, if you're gaining a lot of weight over the weekend, my main concern is, is water weight. I mean, you really can gain fat in two days. I mean, you, you, it's not possible. I mean, you, it's just a whole lot of calories you have to eat in two days to gain fat. Um, ma- it's mainly water weight. Uh, so what I'll about j- performance, though? I mean, performance for sure, though, right? That will be affected on Monday, definitely. Yeah. Definitely if you eat, like, crap over the weekend, if you eat a whole lot of that's, BS, yeah. that's going to affect so your So you could have had a great workout on Friday, and then you get it off Saturday, Sunday. Monday, you come back, and then... Yeah, yeah I think, like, uh, oh, yeah, there was this one time uh, we, we ate, we went to Mazalan, it had this big carne asada plate that has, you know, this big steak with uh, rice, beans, tortillas. So me and my brother, Santi, went ham on it. But then we went to play basketball an hour later, which we gave it time. I'm like, hey, it's an hour later, but brother, worst mistake ever. We felt heavy. Shots weren't falling because it's just like I felt like I was just stuck to the ground. And I didn't consider that. I was just hungry at the time. I'm like, just going to eat a big plate. We're going to fucking burn these calories anyway. By playing basketball, so why not? Worst mistake ever, man. We should have did that after to just get those calories back. And that's just goes back to knowledge because we felt heavy. I, we didn't play that good. I mean, part of it is just uh, the fat sitting in your stomach. It takes a lot of energy to break down to digest the fat. So essentially what's going on at that point in time with all the fat in your stomach, the blood is going into there to help digest and break down the fat. Versus the blood actually taking oxygen to your muscles. You can perform better. That's where you feel the heaviness. Or you, you can't make shots because your shot is weaker. Because you don't have all that oxygen in your muscles to perform better. And so you def- feel, yeah, you just feel So definitely, we don't, I don't recommend a fatty meal before you go work out or before you have any type of form, performance. Because additional fat is going to affect you. Yeah. Because it... Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say because it just... Your energy is different too. Because like, you, yeah. you know, when you eat a big meal, you're like, oh, I want to take a nap and shit. You know, that's how... I was feeling and it just really got yeah, the best of me. Another yes. common question, uh, don't eat after a certain time. Oh, good question. I was going to go to that. Individualize. If you're working out at 8 o'clock at night, I'm going to tell you don't eat after 8, but I need to recover though. Okay. So for an individual, yeah, you can have something at, after 8 o'clock. What well, boils down is calorie in versus calories out. If you have, if you eat after 6, yeah. People say that as a form of control. So let's say you don't eat after six, you typically tend to have your heavy, heavy meal at night, so you stop eating after six, you, cut, you stop eating calories, you stop gaining weight. So it's a form of control. Uh, does it work for everybody? No. Is it appropriate for everybody? No. Can it work for somebody? Yeah, it can. And it's, it's based on the individual. If someone's working out at six o'clock at night, they're gonna have a hard workout, but you can't eat after six, 
So you're not going to recover. What progress are you making? Mm. So you're not really re introducing those nutrients into your body to maintain your muscle mass, to stop the muscle breakdown, to rehydrate yourself, to get that on a um, sodium back in your body because it's a rule. I, it's, it's an individual. It's just based on the individual. I mean, it could what work about, for people. Uh, sleep. Like if, if you eat, is there a certain time frame that you should wait to go to sleep? Because I've heard that one too. Like, oh, don't go to sleep with a full stomach or else. Uh, yeah, like that's a big, that's a reason why people get fat because they eat and then go to sleep. I mean, it's possible. I can't, I can't say I looked at research to say because you eat at night, it increases, increases it increases body weight. Um, is it possible? Yeah. But I can't say yes or no on that because I don't, haven't done the research. I go based on the science. Is there science saying that? Um, yeah, you hear a lot. A lot of people are saying it, um, but is there science saying that? At you least know? for work, what works for me on that, and because uh, I used to think the same, but bro, sometimes you're like, you're editing or doing something in your computer and then like you're about to go to sleep and you're like, I'm hungry. So you're not going to be like, oh, let me go eat and then wait an hour to go to sleep. You know, like I'll eat normally when it's that. I'll eat something light and I'll eat it. Wash, brush my teeth and go to sleep and I feel like that for me at least it doesn't affect me like I don't drink that much liquid as well because I know when you lay down depending on the position you're on it also affects like the liquids just like sometimes like you feel like it's like here because you're laying in a certain position where be. it's like you know so I feel like it, that depends so like for example when I'm doing that I'll eat either a peanut butter and jelly to go to sleep but eating those a lot man those are good uh, or a protein bar mm -hmm. and an oatmeal bar and the Works for fine for me. Now I'll go to sleep five minutes, eat that protein bar, drink a little uh, juice, go to sleep. Works works for me, but it might not work for. And everybody's body's different. Some yeah, body might exactly. metabolize that differently when they go to sleep. Others metabolize it differently. So, um, well, uh, what you would say is a calorie in, ca calorie out. That's the main thing to. Yeah, you just. I mean, if you look at that, you have a pretty good idea if you're gonna gain weight or lose weight. How much you're intaking, how much you're burning. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Um, yeah, you could get more specific. You could get more technical. Um, if you start there, it gives you a good idea. If you have to understand what are you eating, how much calorie are you taking, how much do you need, how much are you burning, that gives you a good foundation of where you got to go. Uh, it's not like a black and white. You, you need to eat 2,000, you eat 18,000, 18, I mean, 2,000, you eat 1,800, you're going to lose weight. Maybe it's not that simple. But it gives you a, a starting point. You know, definitely that's where you, you just need somewhere to start. You just can go blindly, just start doing whatever you want, you know? When you, you were in school and the teachers gave you that first test the first day and they'd be like, oh, well, you're just taking this test to see where you're at. That way I can be able to know what I'm going to teach. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the same with the nutrition. So Exactly. So, I mean, that's an entry level um, nutrition consultation. It is. You have a bunch of questions with the, your client, find out where they're at. Uh I'm not going to repeat what you already know. Mm -hmm. You know, your time, if you're paying for this session, your time is valuable. So I want to teach you what you want to know. I'm not going to go back to square one. If you know about calories and well, how much calories are what you're eating, I'm going to skip that step. So you definitely have to know where your client's at. Definitely know if they have any medical history. You have to know where they're at. If they, they care more about their medical condition or about losing weight. It's all different. It's all, everyone's different. Everyone has a different reason, different why, different goal in mind yeah you can't be one and you have a framework of what a diet should look like but you have to cater to that individual you know you can't have follow all oh, follow the the my plate which is a usca standard this is the my plate everybody follow my plate yeah it, that's a framework it's an idea what your plate should look like mm -hmm. but again for me it's different because i'm dominican your place is going to look different because you're Boricua. Your place is going to look different because you're, you're Mexican. And they also look different. But you have a framework. This much fruit, this much vegetable, this much protein. You have an idea of what the fruit groups look like. You just kind of fill in, fill in those blanks of who you are with your culture in that plate. So how long would you say it, it would take for somebody to find the perfect diet for them? Perfect. I mean, I just don't like the word perfect. Or not perfect, but you know? what works, what works like somebody that's just completely out of whack and they don't, they don't know, they don't know a thing. How long would you say it, it would take to get, of course, every individual. Everyone's different. Is, yeah, like yeah. I said, that's the guy I talked about. I told him just cut your rice in half. He lost weight. 
Um, there's people who want it, are hard gainers. And you just gotta int- introduce some calories and then gain weight. Um, I just suggest just start somewhere. Start find a baseline. Know how much you're intaking. Know what what's your goal. What is your why? What is so what you're saying you basically there? is that there's no perfect diet. No, there isn't. Okay. I there's, think it's what no Jeffrey says is finding the why. Yeah. Just you you just got understand why you're doing this why diet if you start a diet you're gonna stop a diet so if you start something versus changing the way your lifestyle changing your relationship with food changing that is different from i'm gonna start a diet if you start something eventually stops but versus I'm going to change who I am. I'm going to change the way I look at things. I'm going to change my relationship with food. I'm going to change that. It's a different it's all mind, it's a mindset. Food is psychological. You know, just like eating disorder. People think it's, it's with food. No, it's psychological. There's some psychological trauma with eating disorder patient that manifests with food. That's so, yeah, because uh, I know somebody that has a eating disorder. And I'm always asking, like, what is a purpose and reason behind it like just wanting to eat 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 non sometimes they don't know they really don't know it sometimes well, then, it takes then, a psychologist to find that reason and help them like through that reason with me I, I learned that uh and see i'm a pretty self-aware dude like even though when i'm fucking up i know i'm fucking up and i realized that because I, I i blew up you know i fucking i got fat within the past few and i was stressed so i was like I call myself and I'm sitting here thinking of all my, what I got to do, what I got to, so I'm fucking smoking weed and then going back in the house and eating. So that's kind of taking me away from the problems, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just feeling good, you know, and that's what did it. I, until I realized I'm like, damn, that's what's doing it. Like, I'm just fucking eating for no reason, you know, mm-hmm. like, but if I wouldn't have done that psychological fucking thing with myself, then I would still be like, yeah, you just got to find what, what, what is that barrier? What is causing you to behave a certain way? Um, the most nutrition is all psychological. It's, it's not food. I mean, something made you eat this. Something like your culture makes you eat your food. Um, your stress, like we said before. Like y'all were saying too, is, a who, trigger. is uh, like who you uh, surround yourself with. Because I, I... That too. I realized like, uh, I was like looking at it and I was like, okay, so what do me and my friends do? Shit, we drink. You know, we go to the bar and we sit there for four or five hours and we're drinking beer. Exactly. And we're, we're just drinking. Doom, doom, doom. Uh, what else do we do? No, oh, so like, you you talked about yeah, it the other yeah, day. Yeah. That shit was interesting because it's like you, you're there four hours drinking. So you're just in taking those calories in. You guys are sitting there. Once you guys are done, you guys go ahead and be like, I'm starving. Let's go eat somewhere. You eat some fucking heavy shit to go here and go to bed. Yeah. So those calories are just sitting there. Yeah. Just. I mean, it's just a sex of calorie, regardless if you worked it out or not. I mean. It's going to impact you. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of when you went to work out. I mean, you, well, yeah, yeah, you yeah, drank yeah. beer, yeah. you ate like crap. It's going to get, it's going to affect you regardless and, of what and you do. When the, the thing, the, the funny thing is, is when all, when you, all your friends do that, every time they call you, they're going to be like, hey, let's go eat, bro. And that's, you know, that's what it was. Like every time I hang, with, I hang out with my friends, we're eating or we're drinking. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing, you know, and not even consciously. No, because that's who you are. It's what you do. You know, so that's, how, that's how we roll. But it takes someone or yourself or somebody to help you see that and make you realize okay i see the, the problem but it's still up to that individual if they want to change it themselves or fix the problem i mean i can't make someone want to eat better or stop drinking beer i can't do that um i could point it out to them and then connect their why with the beer this is going to help you get to where you want to go make that connection no it's not okay what do you want to do so it's never me telling them, okay you can't have beer Okay, you can't tell somebody what to do, but I can help them realize this is not helping you get to where you want to go. So what do you want to do? What's more important, this beer or your goal? Oh, my goal. Okay, so let's work on getting to your goal. And it's it's, it's hard because it's a moment thing. So, like, I just pictured that when you said that to me, I pictured somebody handing me that beer, and I'm here in 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 an environment that's, like, vibe and, Mm -hmm. and, like, like you're just like, all right, let me take it, just one. And then you start with one, you take another one, and then boom, and that's why you fucked up. You know, yesterday I drank a little bit too much because of that. I was in a good environment. I was watching a fight. I was with some good friends. I got one beer, and then my friends pull up, 
Like, yeah, like, they keep bringing me beers. Boom. Like he was saying Boom. earlier about the environment. Like LeBron surrounds himself around like younger dudes that. So him being the older dude and seeing all these young dudes that are at the top of their fucking. He can't be the old nigga that's just fucking. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, everything in life is your environment. Everything. You are a product of your environment. If you're, you surround yourself with positive people that are successful, you're going to be positive success. You just surround yourself with shitty people. You're going to. I always tell my son. If you hang around like sh- with shit, you're gonna smell like shit. I mean, that's who you who you associate yourself with. That's who you know you think that's normal. That's your everyday life. You know, drinking, chilling, having party, not versus you know somebody else that's successful and working on building their band, building the business. So if you you are you are your environment, yeah, you are. I mean, what's crazy with me is that I've done both. You know, so yeah. To me, I can you can yeah, see because you've been yeah, on yeah, both yeah, sides. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. like. The BS, and you can see it's a suspect thing. So now you, but everyone can't see that. Yeah. Everyone hasn't been on both sides. They've only just been on one side. and just don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. They don't saw it. nothing wrong with it. Just a little beer. Two, three, four. To pay my bills. That's the one that everybody loves to use. My bills are still are all taken care of. I can. You're not gonna tell me not to drink. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah. But if you're talking about nutrition, then. We want to be a better athlete. We want to perform better. I want to lose weight. You want to okay? Is that getting you to where you want to be? Mm-hmm. Do you have to have six beers, seven beers? Is that seem reasonable? Mm-hmm. No. Is there a different option? Why are you drinking? Because I just want to get buzz. Do you just take one, two shots and get buzz? Save yourself a whole lot of calories. So just kind of work yeah. within the budget. You know, so yeah, I'm not yeah, yeah, don't yeah. drink, don't have fun. Yeah. But if you, your goal is to get buzz and relax, take a shot. Save yourself a whole lot of calories. You didn't. You have to drink six beers to get buzzed. Yeah. Take one shot, you get buzzed. You sell yourself how many? How much calories? Yeah. And you got what you wanted to get buzzed and to relax. Let's go get a bottle. <laughs> Bye, <mom. laughs> but, so, you know that's you work with individuals. No, no point in time telling them you can't drink, don't have this. All right, why are you doing it? I like you, bro. You know, just find that individual and work <laughs> with them. You it know? is exactly what it comes down to. It's well, like I'm yeah, sold. No, it's <laughs> but you it, gotta find. I gotta know who you are. I can't yeah, tell you. Yeah. What well, works for you if I don't know who yeah, you is, are? Yeah, it is. Crazy. I can't tell you stop drinking beer because that's who you are. You, I'm. I love beer. Okay. Do you have to drink it every weekend? No. Every other weekend? All right. Let's start there. All right. Once a month? Are we there now? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Two months later, we still. Can we do once a month? Yeah, I think we do once a month. I'm not feeling the beer anymore. Okay. Cool. For sure. That's that's crazy. You, just knowing, just knowing, because like that's half that's half the battle. That's what it is. I, I mean, yeah. And it's hard for people to be self-aware. Like I said before, look yourself in that mirror to, and to know like, man, I got myself here. Yeah. And to admit me. Yeah. Type 2 diabetes, that's preventable. Yeah. That is preventable. Type 1, you're born with that. That's not on you. That's when the pancreas starts. Uh, Can create the insulin. Insulin. You know? Mm. Um, you're born with that. Yeah. That's not on you. Type 2? That, that was up to you. Yeah. Your so lifestyle, what about, what your about lifestyle. Like young kids, uh, so like, like uh, I hear a lot of like, uh, like, uh, like, let's say like a thirteen-year-old or something uh, gets it. Where you blame the? Uh, they are blaming the parent. The parents is providing those that food to that child. The child, I mean, at that okay, point, yeah, yes, at that point, the child, the child yeah. didn't really have a choice. It's just his environment. Exactly. Look, bro. His environment. Look. I saw he had to eat. <sighs> yeah. He, he I'm, mean, I'm a kid. I'm hungry. Yeah. I got donuts i got honey buns it's all i got i'm gonna yeah, eat yeah it's sugary substance i don't feel full i'm gonna keep eating more donuts and more honey buns or try to do yeah you know? it, it, it's, it's like environment we, it's environment we, and the parents create that environment it could be lack of ignorance yeah. or just culturally yeah. hispanic we show our love through food yeah. i'm not going to deny my son what he likes to eat because i love him i want to show him i love him by providing the honey bun and the donuts and the and, and the yeah. bs food you know it's deep it's not just, oh, it's environmental, remove the donuts. Why are you giving that? Yeah. Do you not know that? Do you not see that connection? It's, oh, it's how you show your love. Can we show your love a different way? Can we find a different product that will show him you love him that's not with food? Yeah. I mean, because it's Spanish, that's how we show love. Yeah, it's, it's I exactly mean, to, what it For example, to. I went to a trip in Puerto Rico one time. My wife's grandmother, every day she'll make lunch for us. I was taught, well, at least I don't know if I was taught, but the way I do if you feed me something, and if I like it, I'll eat it off to show you that I like what you cooked for me. Even if it's too much food, I'm stuffed, I eat it all. 
I mean, by the third day, I asked her, can you not serve me so much? She got so offended that what, I would even say that to her. To the point like she stormed off the out of the kitchen, A by serve your damn self. My wife and her cousins laughed at me like I'm like, what did I do? I just wanted less food. That's how she saw her love yeah. to feed me. I just insulted her by telling her I wanted less food. But I couldn't eat anymore because I showed my love by eating it all. Now it's too stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's you know, that's just yeah. a misunderstanding there. But that's mm-hmm. kinda you know. So it goes down to that, you know, because it's the perfect example. We went to a restaurant, it was uh, one of my cousins' birthday, and we went to a restaurant and and there was the um, the cousin, one of the cousins had a daughter, and she's like probably two years old, three years old, kind of. And before we are looking at the menus and we're just wanting, you know, getting appetizers and whatever, she brings her daughter a shake that is like this big for like a two-year-old. This big before the food. So I'm, I'm, I'm over here looking, and I'm like, that is not a good decision. But, you know, like, I, who do you blame, you know, like? The parents, right? Yeah, because they, they made that choice. You know, they right, and they their their lack of knowledge. They should know that you got to. I get, mean, they should, but they should. Are we taught? It's a lot of sugar. Are we taught nutrition in high school? No. At what point in time did they learn nutrition? I mean, so, at one point in time, they learned how to eat. She is. I, I had a, te- uh, uh, a teacher. We were, I was just talking about it too. I had a teacher in high school that was all about nutrition. She was like. Uh, all about yoga and stuff like that and the other teachers would make fun of her because she was like that mm-hmm. so I'm like that's fucked up like now that I was thinking about it talking to my homie about it I was like they used to bully the fuck out of Dr. Polly just cause she was like trying to teach us the right thing like she's telling us to you know teach us about nutrition yeah. and all the other teachers are all overweight and shit and they're just made, like yeah you don't think about it cause you're damn. young and ignorant yeah. and shit but now so that like, I think about it I'm like man there were a bunch of bitches to Dr. Paul yeah <laughs> so like I'm over here thinking like this two year old is drinking this shake before she even gets her meal like that is just like and I mean what you witness there is the true is learning that is acceptable she's learning that it's okay to have this big ass smoothie before her meal so you learn your habits from your parents, your grandmother, whoever raised you. And we'd never teach anyone or correct the mistakes. And how do you correct that? How do you correct to tell a mother, mm-hmm. don't give that to your child? Yeah. Are you going to tell me what to do with my child? That's a tough one. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not really telling them. It's really navigate, help them understand what they're doing. Yeah. And hopefully what you say sparks something yeah. to make a change. Yeah. To know like what you're doing to your child, you're damaging your child, you love your child. But this does to your child, does X, Y, C to your child. This is what you want to do to them? Are you, are you, do you feel comfortable doing to your child? No, I don't. So what do, you, what do you think you should do? Should you continue giving that meal to that child? Maybe, maybe I shouldn't. Okay. So they made that decision. Not once I tell them they shouldn't. Yeah. But I spoke to them in a way where they made the decision. They realized this is bad. I don't want to do this. I made the decision. Versus so where you, if, if Darwin would have been like, what are you doing? You're letting her drink that before the meal? She would have just been like. Yeah. And, like, that, I, I, and, and, and that's that, the thing, bro. Like, but in a not, way, I wanted to, but it's like that's, that's not my kid. I don't want to get hit with that. Oh, you don't, te- you don't, you know, don't you teach don't. me how to. I mean, you don't. I mean, at that point, yeah, time, yeah, no, you're not, I, you're not, you're not. I a mean, place. at least I was trying to look out, like you know, in a way. But they won't see it that way. I'd be like, no, oh, it's I'm insulting. To look out for you. They don't know who you are. They're, you're telling me what to do. You're telling right, me how, yeah, to don't tell me how to raise my kids. At that point in time, no matter how you approach it, doesn't matter if you're politically and not politically. You just you're just approaching it in the wrong space. You're in a restaurant telling them what to do. I mean, if we're coming to a client, talking to one on one, we're talking about church. You, you know why you're here. We, you know, you, you, your mindset is anywhere like, okay, we're talking about what's good is bad. You're in a restaurant to tell somebody no. It doesn't matter who yeah, yeah, is telling them yeah. this. They're not having that. It's a mindset. They're not ready to hear that. Versus walking in to talk to nutritionists one on one, you're ready to hear a few things. You're walking in because you're ready for something. Yeah. At a restaurant, you're ready for that. It goes back to the gym. People walk in to get information about the membership is because they're ready for. They're ready something. for something. Yeah, yeah. you just gotta it's just find, you know, find out who what. they are, and make it worth it to them. You know, I mean, it sells. Building those, con- making that connection, building that bridge, like making a, it ooh, personal. Making it personal. Okay, why are you in here? You're into Ghost Gym. You're into ATT, into Verizon. Why are you here? And find out. Perfect. I can solve those problem with X Y C service. And because you wanna lose weight. Perfect. We got a weight loss plan. We got personal training that can help you lose weight. Uh, you want to gain, gain, gain lean body mass? Perfect. We got a 30-day plan to, that guaranteed to increase 10%. So you sell them on that based on what they want. Just, everyone's not 
the same package. Yeah. You got to sell them different package for what they want. I mean, same mm -hmm. with thing with your videography. You know, you don't have a blanket statement like, hey, what are you looking for? What do you want? What did, what, what is your vision? Yeah. And you build a package on based on what they want. Interesting. So before we wrap this up, Jeffrey, I need one more take on this. And we were talking about it the other day. So I saw a documentary on uh, plant-based stuff, mm -hmm. on veganism and all that good jazz. And it was pretty interesting. It was on Netflix. And it kind of... What was it called so the people know? Uh, the documentary was... I forgot. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, it's, it has to do with nutrition. So it gives you kind of a... a, a and by you look it up while he's talking, so we could get it for the people. Yeah, so yeah, we can give it to the people. So it pretty much just gives you that intake of what meat does and what health issues it causes to eat meat. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives you some information, but to a certain degree. So what is your intake on that as far as like, you, you think everybody I mean, should be I know plant-based, vegan? What? The document you're talking about, I haven't seen it myself. I, it's just hard to comment from that I haven't seen. But I'm pretty sure it's just, just bias. They give them one perspective. When it's just, you're just seeing one side of the coin, it's, it's bias. You should always ask yourself the other side of the coin. So definitely, it's very biased. Um, I feel a plant base is, is a, good, a good, good option. It could be for the individual. Um, do I think everyone should be vegan? My personal opinion, I don't think as humans we're designed to be vegan. And that's, that's one thing that I thought was very interesting because you know how a dog, a wolf, you know how their teeth are mm -hmm. shaped like, like this? Yeah. So they can Correct. Uh, beat up the meat, you know, just Correct. To, you know, eat the meat better. Us humans, that's, that's what they were saying there. And it kind of got me even thinking because like our teeth, we have like flat in the back. So our, our thing are not designed, like our teeth are not designed to crunch, you know, just chop up the damn meat when we're biting it. But it, but it is. But it is. So you have the molars to bite the plant. You have your canines, the sharp ones. This is flat to get into the meat. So your teeth are designed for that. Because your, your body needs vitamin B12. Where do you find B12? Meat. Animal products. You can't have B12 with, uh, there's not like a pill no. that you can take B12? There, your supplements. Okay. So, you, so you're telling me, be a vegan, but supplement, because it's the best diet, but you got to get your B12 through the supplement. Where do they get that B12, though? Supplement. Right, but where do they get that? Like, where do they get that? B12. They're oh. getting it out of the animal, right? And putting it into a pill? Or how does that work? No, I mean, there's different forms of B12. It's just a synthetic form. Yeah. It's just uh, man-made. Okay. But B12 is only found in animal product. If you're a vegan, you got to supplement. You have to supplement. There's no other way around it. If you don't eat no animal product, you have to. So it's the best diet, but yet you got to supplement for it. So that tells you right there in itself. And that, B12 is necessary. We'll die yes, without B12. Yes, it is. Without it, I mean, you have a lot of neurological problems. Um, so it's, it's vital to your, your existence, you know? Um, so for me, that in itself tells me, like, we're not designed for that. Not to say that you should be, um, I'm not saying everything should be meat. It should be a balance. Definitely could be a plant-based heavy with some meat on there. I mean, there's different type of vegetarian that are locto over vegetarian that eat, you know, milk and eggs. I mean, that's a balanced diet. You got your B12 through there. Some of them just eat fish only. Um, but definitely, we could all be healthy by eating more plant. Yeah, I think we tend to eat too much meat. And it boils down to the quantity. I think, if anything, that, that documentary taught me um, to reduce it. Because mm -hmm. I, I did think about it as far as going vegan, but I'm like, I just can't do it. I feel like I just, I just can't. Mm -hmm. No. And I then, mean, our culture is, if you go to, to a steakhouse, how big are the steaks there? Small. Are they? 12-ounce cer steak is small? How much? 12-ounce steak okay, at a steakhouse? Okay, yeah, there's certain places that have them small, smaller than that. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean really like to fucking eat. 6-ounce, 12-ounce, 18-ounce steaks? I mean, this, all that's big. I mean, 3 ounces is sufficient. Yeah. A 3-ounce steak is enough protein your body needs. But we're talking about doubling to 6-ounce, tripling to 12-ounce. That's the issue. That's where it lies. People are just excessive with their, their animal conception. That's what it boils down. It's not to say go all the way to the left or go all the way to the right. It's just find that balance. You know, yeah. definitely eat more plant-based, eat more fruit, eat more vegetable, eat more whole grains, um, reduce the fatty acid, which you found in the animal products. Um, so just have enough that you, that you need. 
and incorporate some more plant um, nuts and seeds, which is plant-based. I do believe in plant-based. I do believe there's a place for it. I don't think we need to be a vegan to really say that there's the ultimate perfect diet. I don't believe in a perfect diet. Uh, it's just what's right for the individual. I think, yeah, reducing at least the, the meats. Just uh, that, that guy, uh, are, you, are you familiar with Dr. Sebi? The, the doctor? No. No? Okay, well, I guess when you have time, look him up. But that's, that was his thing, I think. Like, he did nothing but plant-based, and he was, like, super fucking healthy and shit like that. And it can be. <laughs> and it can be. Yeah, you feel better, too. You have a higher energy because, yeah. I'm, and I'm not saying it, it's not appropriate. I'm not saying it, it won't work. It could probably work. Uh, I don't think it's right for an individual. I don't think it's right to say this is the only diet is the best yeah. diet. You shouldn't you shouldn't eat any other way. That's yeah. what's my argument. Yeah. And then you I know? think a lot of times too, the vegan, the uh, a lot of vegan people are very like that because they're like against like animal cruelty and stuff yeah. like that. So they're like emotionally. Uh, they have they're vegan because of like the cultish, emotion, like religious. Yeah, animals. and that's what I'm against. Just pushing that agenda on other people and, and chastising other people because they choose to eat mm-hmm. meat product. That's kind of like, I'm not cool with that. If you choose to be vegan, I'm cool with it. I don't see nothing wrong with it. That's who you are. But don't push it on other people and judge other people for what the way they eat. Um, and honestly, we all eat like crap. We can all eat better, you know. Yep. Another thing, um, do you buy your stuff at like Walmart and stuff like that, or? I'm on a budget. I look for what I could find. I mean, I go to Sprout every Wednesday. Double deal Wednesdays. So I got my fruit, my produce from Sprouts. I like going to Crest. So I just look for a deal. I don't, it's not like a one spot I go to. Uh, so you're asking where I buy conventional versus organic. Um, yeah, I, don't I don't buy organic. One, it's time in my budget. Two, the research i have done in the past, as far as from a nutritional standpoint, it's not a significant amount. So let's say, you know, broccoli, conventional broccoli versus organic broccoli just eat a little bit more conventional and you meet that so what's the difference so the in biggest the, issue so the biggest what's issue the difference in our organic shit because the biggest issue is not the nutrients it's really what it boils down to is the chemicals that are used to the pesticides oh that's kind of the big concern there is all the pesticides on the conventional um where damages is that doing to our body if it's doing any any damage what about that uh was it gmo uh genetically modified organisms um again no really research is saying that that gmo causes xyz it's hard to prove it does cause anything um gmo is can be viewed both ways i mean you you have a starving country and you know let's say africa all the thing they can survive is some gmo rice you're telling me no it's not good for them only food they can have is it's all we got we could mass produce this it's gmo rice we can make this and can feed the, the whole country no they shouldn't have it the right this is or boils down to it's just the right place and thing for mm-hmm. everybody it was not the same i mean what does that stand for gmo uh genetically modified organism so pretty much it's just man engineer so they put an extra gene into a particular food to make it more resistant to let's so say, like when you see the a big ass fucking tomato like is that a it could be a gmo product i mean naturally it's not they're not meant to grow that big and meant to make them bigger so you could Sell them more often, sell them for more money, make more money off of it, um, produce more, feed more people off of it. Um, so there's a different reason for it to say that I shouldn't, organic's the only way to go. There's different levels. Like I said, if I'm going to talk to somebody who who's, makes $30,000 a year, I'm going to tell them to go organic, I lost them. They don't got They're, the money for organic. Yeah. But should I just chastise them because they can't afford it? That's not their budget. But if you're eating a apple versus over a sticker bar, convention, not organic, doesn't matter. You eat a better choice. For me, it's all about choice. It's all about a continuism. Um, you know, I had so an example. So if you had the budget, would you go organic? If I had the budget, yes. My budget doesn't say I can't, I could be in that class. I have a family of four. I'm not affording organic. But if organic food is on sale, I'm buying it. If it's, if it's on my budget, it's in my, I'm going to get it. You know, I don't know if it's, I mean, I've never, I've never had the budget for organic. So, uh, but I had a Thai, uh, this guy at the gym one day, uh, he was like real knowledgeable dude. And he said that they went to, and they bought organic and there's less food, but he said he felt fuller longer. It's possible. Uh, I just have more questions. Uh, I just kind of find 
You bought organic. Okay. My question would be, cost you more money. So you're more likely to eat it because it costs you more money. Fruit and vegetable have a lot more fiber. So you're eating more fruit and vegetable. Is that why you feel fuller? Because you spend more money, so you're not going to toss it out. You're going to actually eat the food. We tend to do a lot, have a lot of food waste. So it was cheap. It's a dollar a pound. I don't eat it. I toss it out. No, this cost me three bucks a pound. I'm going to eat this. Is that three? See, I just had a lot of questions yeah. to say, yeah, organic made you fuller. I just have more questions. Okay. Are you just, did you change the way you eat? Going organic? Is that just a different change? You yeah. just start eating more vegetable now? Um, that would be interesting. So it's just a lot of questions. It, that's the hard thing with nutrition. I mean, it's, so many questions. Yeah, it, it's like an experiment. It, it is really not is. one. It's not one thing could cause this. It's you ate a food, and that food has so much different nutrients, so many different vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates. Which one actually did it? What made the change? Um, it's just cause and effect. I, I don't know. Eating A causes B. There's a relationship. This relationship eating more organic. This relationship, but there's no cause and effect. A cause B. Just when A happens, B happens. That's relationship. Yeah. That's all. And most re- nutrition is relationship. There's no cause and effect. A causes B. And, and it's difficult because it's just so many factors, yeah. you know? So when you compare a cheeseburger that's a dollar compared to a salad that's $5, you think that has a lot to do with the, like how the system is. Created? Yeah. I mean, that's you know, on like the, I mean, the healthy shit is expensive, but the. The garbage shit is just... The healthier items requires more effort. I won't say it's more expensive. I mean, if you're out, if you can compare a dollar hamburger to a salad that's made in fast food, yeah. But if you can at home making it yourself, it's probably more economical. It's just, I think it requires more effort. I won't say it's more expensive, mm-hmm. you know? And just learning how to shop. Like I said, I go to Sprout every Wednesdays. You get the new advertised price and the old advertised price on the same day. So double deal Wednesdays, and I, I, my rule of thumb is I try to buy my fruit and vegetable for about a dollar, no more a dollar a pound. If it's more, yeah. Then if it's more, it, I really want, gotta want to have it. You know, I that's kind of how I stay with my budget. You know, that's kind of where I look at. That's fucking interesting, man. But that's just me, cause yeah. I'm a numbers guy, and I look at numbers and I look at my budget, and that's kind of where I'm at. A dollar is kind of my sweet point. You just know, over a dollar, it just tends to add up. When you, know, you have a like specialty, the cotton candy grapes. You heard about that one? Cotton candy grapes, grapes that taste like cotton candy. No, but it's about th- about four dollars a pound. That's, that's not in my budget, but maybe I have it once every other month. I just buy a pound. I'm okay with that. It's not something I'm buying it every weekend. You know, it's not mm-hmm. in my budget. So that's kind of you just kind of give or take. You know, yeah. just know that if you spend the money, eat the product. We have a lot of food waste too. We tend to want to eat healthier. Um, it just requires more work. Yeah. Interesting. That's yes, information, man. Yeah, so, uh, anything else you want to add, uh, Aaron? Any other questions you think? Um, no, man, I think, I think that we covered everything. I would say, yes, yeah, like self-awareness is another thing. I think thing. that's the take of this podcast <laughs> is just like knowing that every single thing you do, it's just questions that you got to ask Would it yourself. be fair to say that a good starting point for anybody out there that knows that their diet is lacking is uh, monitoring that would be a good starting point for everybody. It could be. It could be. Um, I think it's just like you said for awareness, just kind of be more aware of what you're putting into your body. Um, and just finding help if you don't know, don't find the correct help. So there's a lot of nutritionists out there. Um, just because Bobby lost weight, now he's trying to sell your plan. Just question who they are and what they're about. Look at their backgrounds. Are they registered dietitians? Are they licensed? Um, did they go to school for nutrition? Did they study this? So you have a better idea who they are. You feel more comfortable. Are they credible individual? Um, just because you saw on Instagram pushing over life, for me, that's questionable. Um, people are just going to be aware of that. I mean, it's a free market. Anybody can be out there sell a nutrition plan, but the consumer has to be smart enough to say, like, okay, this may not be the best fit for me. Maybe I need to look for somebody that's more in line with who I am and what I, I want in my life. Um, it's all about that. It's a free market. So do your research. On do your research. Who, who's stuff. giving you nutrition advice? Yeah. Just because, like I said, with the early today, we're talking about the water. I sound smart, but 
just know who you're talking to. Yeah. Just know what just, what is they're saying. I mean, yep. is it true? Back up their claim. Okay. This is this. They got all these pictures that look sexy, but that doesn't mean anything to me. Just because you look sexy on Instagram, don't mean you're you know what you're saying when it comes to nutrition. You just know how to lose weight and how to work out and get yourself. And then, like you said uh, before, too, the whole genetic thing, too. I think a lot of people take advantage of that. Like they're like, for example, you, you have fucking six pack. You have a so you could take your shirt off and be like, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a and people would be like, shit, exactly. this nigga looks fucking and good. And they look you know? for that. Yeah. Like they all, oh, you know, like yeah. he's all shredded and shit. So, so he's what do you give do? me that? What result. can I do? And, 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 and people like to take advantage of that. What, what would be uh, one of the uh, uh, things to look for to know that you're not getting scammed when you're dealing with... I mean, I'm a bit of biased. I'm a registered dietitian. It's definitely somebody that's an RD, registered dietitian. Um, even a licensed dietitian in the state. Um, definitely look, see if they have a degree in nutrition, have a background in nutrition. Um, most nutritionists aren't really showing off their body. I mean, that's a red sign off the bat. Like, look at my sexy body. I want to help you. And most of them are really want to educate you. They don't want to sell you on a nutrition plan. Um, they want to probably help you. It's more of a one-on-one counseling, help you build your relationship with food, uh, make you more aware of who you are and where you want to go. And someone is pushing a product, someone is pushing um, a plan, that's something for me to wreck flags. Not to say they're not capable of doing that, not mm-hmm. to say they can't help you get you where you want to go at. Um, maybe weight loss is all you care about and following his plan will get you the weight loss. Yeah. Uh, but if you're a diabetic that wants to improve your, your blood sugar, is a personal trainer originally going to help you with that? Mm-hmm. Maybe not. They have no background in medical nutrition therapy. They have no clientele or done the expertise of dealing with diabetic patients, you know? Yeah. Just know who you're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, just ask them questions and find out who they are, are they licensed, are they registered, did they study nutrition, even on Instagram. Just posted up something about a week, uh, just started, uh, you know, an account a week ago. Suspicious, it's a brand new account. You know, even with Dr. Oz, I mean, he's a, name of the game, he has his product, he shows his product, he's gonna sell that product. Just be mindful of what you're watching and what, where which is coming from. Like we said earlier, it could come from a mice, it doesn't translate to a human. If it's on a label, it's marketing. It's trying to make you buy a product. Mm-hmm. You know, supplement wise, it's not a lot of supplement out there that actually really work. So look at their why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the important part. Um, pretty interesting. Good ass intake, Jeffrey. Mm, pleasure. Thank you very much for all this information. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, man. It's good ass information. I can't wait to put this thing together. So uh, today's episode's uh, a wrap. We're going to have Jeffrey's information in the link and in the description. So if you guys want more information, want the one-on-one personal shit, hit up Jeffrey, man. So we are out. Peace. Peace.